hello and welcome to Wednesday. It is the 13th? Yes. The 13th of May. And it is about, it is 10 past one in the afternoon and it's the first time I picked up a camera today. I've had a shower because Joe Wicks was a tough one this morning. You're um, And we're about to watch a film. I've done my work in the morning rather than the afternoon because um, Phoebe's not feeling great. She's not unwell. I think she's. I think it's all a bit much. So we're going to watch a film. We're going to snuggle down and watch a film under crochet and knitted blankets. And then I'm going to have to think of what else to film that might be interesting. I have a couple of ideas, but for now we're going to put our feet up. In my case, my crochet covered feet oh and enjoy a film but we haven't decided we haven't decided what we're watching yet Phoebe is making brownies. Phoebe's still feeling a little bit out of sorts and she decided she wanted to do some baking and I'm not helping, she's doing it all. And we're doing it from Mummy's old cookbook from when she was little. Yeah, so we're making chocolate brownies from a cookbook which I had when I was Phoebe's age. It's so old, so I'll just show you the recipe. <laughs> we don't know how they're going to turn out yet. Look how old this is, it's all splattered. So. It's an American cookbook, so it's all in cup measurements. It's very simple. There's the ingredients. And here's the instructions. Hopefully you can see that. You might need to zoom in a bit. Let me, let me go through it. There you go. There's the top three. You can pause it there. And then there's the bottom three, and you can pause it there. <laughs> and helping us today... Who's this, Phoebe? This is our crochet creature mascot of the day. He's a dragon. His name is Spark. He is a boy. He's a boy dragon. People think he's a girl just because he's pink and purple. Doesn't matter what colour he is. He can like pink and purple. Yes, I can. I'm a, I'm a boy and I like pink and purple and that's okay. So, yes. And I have wings. So no. Model your wings. Who are, who's there? No, Hello? No, Hello? No, it's just a free one. <laughs> Model. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I will put the pattern on the screen because I can't remember. Lilia's got one of these in pink as well. And I'm also shortly going to show you the book that I mentioned yesterday that Bob. Ooh, Hoover. Let's go and find Bob. You're not Bob. Nope. Bob was made from. So I'll share that with you in a minute. So the girls were dyeing their hair the other day and that's now worn out and I picked this up in the supermarket for Lilia. It is called Cosmic Blue. This is the colour. But she doesn't she wants a more vibrant blue. She doesn't want like a dark blue. So I'm wondering, given that it's lockdown, maybe I should dye my hair cosmic blue. What do you think? Can you see me, cosmic blue? Maybe I should try that kind of blue steel expression. <laughs> Shall I do it? Do it! <laughs> Dan says I should do it. Right, I want to show you some things. This whole little corner on the, my um, chest of drawers next to my side of the bed is making me very happy, even though this isn't really a long-term solution, because 
we were going to be doing our bedroom about now but that can't happen at the moment um but yeah it just makes me very happy a basket full of yarn and beautiful things and a basket full of beautiful minis and this is a, a piece of sea glass and i just freehand crocheted around it with crochet thread i just made it up as i went so that i created a little hanging for it and when i eventually get my craft shed of dreams it will hang in the window. I'm just looking for a book that I want to show you, the, the pattern book. I thought I'd show you some of the other books that are here. So I've got the sewing book. Not that I ever sew, but I have aspirations. Whoop, nearly dropping the basket. Crocheted wild animals. Dinosaurs, mammoths and prehistoric amigurumi. A couple of pom-poms there and a couple of hardback books load more books <laughs> oh look more books uh-oh more books <laughs> but the book i'm looking for is not here i am sitting with my fluffy hair in front of my craft cupboard so this before i get the craft shed of dreams is where all of my craft stuff lives that's not entirely true it also lives in the baskets you've just seen and in this massive bag and in another equally um, massive box in another wardrobe as well and then the sewing stuff is somewhere separate but this is mostly <laughs> all of my craft stuff and I have come to my craft cupboard which is something I really enjoy doing it is a bit of a pain because as you can see it's all stacked up but it's all very organized and sometimes I come here to have a look at the yarn check on the stash see what I've got get some inspiration and just enjoy being around all the beautiful yarn and things that I have. Hang on a minute, we're about to be interrupted. Right, sorry about that, that was Dan. He had to take a call and he needed to get into the bedroom to do it away from the prying ears of the rest of the people in the house, as in the children. So I got kicked out, but I'm back now. It's four o'clock, honestly. I feel like I've barely done any vlogging today. Anyway, I'm in my craft cupboard and I can't remember what I was saying about it. But here it is and I'm here because I have a project on the go which you have seen uh, it is a, a crochet blanket project I'll show you the yarn I've got all sorted out but now that I've got a load of yarn sorted out and the project is well and truly underway it can no longer just live on the hearth in front of the log burner <laughs> I need to find a project bag. Yay! So we need to go diving for project bags. So I thought I'd do it with you. I'm not going to use this one. This is a lovely big project bag and would be brilliant. It's got a lobster embroidered on it. This is from my friend Gaina. Um, and she gave this to me when we met up. But I am using it to keep part of my stash in. Um, so I, it's going to stay as that um, with that use at the moment because it's doing a very good job of it and I've even got my little Bristol badge on it because that, that's where we were meeting up so I bought a little pin with the the Bristol um, suspension bridge the Clifton suspension bridge probably even says that on the badge no it doesn't right here's another place where that book could be that I wanted to show you there is one more place I'm hoping it's in here this is where I keep all of my pattern books. I've got some stonkingly good ones. Animal heads, trophy heads to crochet. I made my sister the fox and honestly it was ginormous. So these ones must be humongous. Um, and it was a really complicated make. It was a real, it took a long, long time to do and I was so pleased with how it came out. So maybe one day, I'd love to have the zebra. <laughs> Oh, I am quite tempted. I've also got crochet taxidermy. This was a gift from a podcast viewer. There's loads in here that I would really want to make. Look at the hippo. <laughs> I've got loads of the Zumagurumi books. Um, these are my favourite Amagurumi books. Absolutely, bar none. I love these. I have made so many projects from these books. And I even had a few given to me by the publisher and I gave some away as well. So from this one I've made Chloe, the cow, at the bottom there. Let me, I'm not, stop rambling, I'm going to start rambling. Zuma Grimmy 6, 
crochet blocks. This is when I first started crocheting and there's even some of my original practice squares in here. And they're really nice and flat and blocked because they've been stored flat inside the um, book for so long. Three, four, five. I've got five. I could do a couple more and I'd have a nice cushion cover. Hmm. Hmm. What else have I got in here? Oh, another pom pom in here. Oh, I've got some vintage patterns. <gasps> oh, I found the book right at the bottom. This is the book. I know someone commented yesterday to say the name of it. I couldn't remember. Ed Edward's Crochet Imaginarium. Is that right? By Kerry Lord. And it's a mix and match book. So what you do is you and I've got a little thing here with um, the choices that all the family made for what they wanted. Um, so you choose, whoop, it's too complicated to show you, but basically you flip through and you choose the head, the ears, the torso, the arms, the legs and the tail. <laughs> it's fantastic. So that's the book I use for Bob. Vintage patterns. I pick these up when I go to knitting festivals and charity shops because I find them absolutely, I don't know, they're, they're, I just can't resist them, but I never make them. But maybe I should change that. I just love the pictures. I mean, that's quite a nice top. But the the eighties nature of it is just outstanding. <laughs> that one, very sixties there. Bit of an eighties one again. Clearly, really like that one. Be nice in a nice cotton, wouldn't it? Oh, get ready, get ready. This is the front cover of a magazine. Oh yes, 70s glamour. <laughs> and there's a few others in here as well, but I'm trying not to ramble. We have made it to the project bag box. Oh, I can't wait. I know this is like the third or hundredth time I've mentioned it, but I can't wait to have my cra um, craft shed in the garden because all of this will be so much easier to get to. I'm not gonna go through every single bag, but I will show you the ones I'm considering because I have a lot of project bags, all of which I absolutely love. A lot of them are quite small and sock size. Oh, this one might be good, but I made this one and I kind of wanted to use one someone else had made. Um, this is a bag, <laughs> this is a really dodgy bag that I made. I found an old um, panel that I'd made using instructions from a um, magazine to make a little sort of patchwork panel. And I found it when I was clearing out, so I just turned it into a bag. Got my BIPOC in fibre pin on there. Um, yeah, and it's a really good size. And I actually really do like it. I like to use it. So that's a good contender, but it might run out of space quite quickly. But it could do for now. Put that to one side. Don't think that one's going to do the job. That's a pickle lily bag. Really, really like that one. It's perfect for a little sock project for throwing in your backpack. Oh, this one could be good. This was made by Arminty, another lovely viewer of this podcast. And she always comments and yeah, she's lovely on Minty. This is a lovely bag that she made. It's got owls on it and it's got a little Canada, because that's where she lives, little Canada flag on it there. And I've added a few bits. There's my lobster key ring and then there's a little birdie thing that I bought at the village fair. So that would be a good one. It's nice and big. Oh, so many bags in here, which I absolutely love. I love all of my bags. Oh, this would be another good contender. Another nice big one, or possibly slightly smaller than the other choices. This is a bag by Crochet Luna, Claudia, who I'm running the dodgy bag mail with. That's a nice roomy one. I've used this one fairly recently though. So I might give another one a chance. Uh, oh, that's oh, so lovely. Well, I've got my Betsy Makes bags here. These are absolutely gorgeous. This was a gift from Sam of Betsy Makes for obvious reasons. It's got lobsters on and then this one, this was a couple of years ago when she did um, the Strictly yarn. She dyed up the official Strictly yarn and she gave me a skein of it along with this gorgeous bag. But I don't think that's gonna be quite big enough. Uh, oh, there's a few dodgy bags in here that I'd entirely forgotten about. Yeah, I think we are right at the bottom of the dodgy bag barrel here. 
So, which one to choose? It is going to be quite a big project. <clears throat> Which is fine because as it gets too big for a project bag, what I'll actually do is keep the yarn in the bag and the project out. And I'll just, every time I'm not working on it, I'll just um, uh, get to the end of the mini and um, just pull a loop through so it can't unravel. And then we can use it when it's not being worked on. So that's okay. That's not a problem. God, I'm not sure I can get all these back in the box, even though they all just came out of the box. Phew, that's all back in there. Okay, so it's a choice between the bag by our minty with the owls on or the dodgy bag. So I think it's just going to come down to which one is bigger. So the dodgy bag is deeper, but the owl bag from our minty is wider. Ah. I think I'm going to go owl bag because as much as I love my little dodgy bag, I do love using bags that I've been given as gifts. And let's face it, the owl one's a lot better made. <laughs> owl bag it is. I'll have to show you the project that's going in it now. But first I've got to get all of this back in the cupboard. It's almost time to go and cook dinner and I'm going to actually finish the vlog here today because I am absolutely shattered. So I want to get it edited and uploaded so it's all ready for you in the morning. Uh, and also, I think it's long enough already. I seem to have done a lot of talking today. Sorry about that. And I just wanted to say a huge thank you to you all because, as you know, in May this year, all of our YouTube earnings are going to be going to the two charities underneath this video. And the way we make money is from revenue from advertising. So every time someone watches an advert, as I understand it, we get a small amount of revenue. Um, so for those of you, of you that are watching and not skipping, thank you so much. The revenue is building up. The girls announced yesterday we've earned just over... I think 170 pounds so far we've only done uh well as of yesterday we'd only done 11 videos so that's amazing if we can keep doing that we could have a really nice amount of money to give to those charities at the end of the month so thank you for everyone who is uh, liking the videos subscribing to the channel leaving comments and doing all the things just to help really bring the videos up a bit and hopefully get them seen and the more they get seen the more adverts get washed the more and the more revenue we get so it's fantastic thank you um i also wanted to say just before i say goodbye that we have been watching grayson's art club on channel four here in the uk i'm sure you can probably download it elsewhere i'm not sure you can certainly watch it online on the channel four website and it is just the most joyful wonderful program to be on at this time he's in lockdown with his wife in London I think and it's just all about creating an art and how it is good for the soul um, and in all its forms whether it's drawing, knitting, cooking, photography, um, anything, dancing, music, I would just recommend you go and watch it. It's a very very, it has a feel of, it's just a very very joyful thing to watch. We've really really been enjoying it enjoying it and it's really cheered us up in a difficult week right i'm going to shut up because i'm rambling and i will say good night and we'll see you tomorrow bye mm -hmm.